Joe Rogan got quite a bit of heat recently about mentioning a, a, a paper and a, a broader idea, which I didn't, I don't think is that controversial, but maybe we can expand on it. Mm-hmm. And, and the idea is that vaccines uh, create selective pressure for a virus to mutate and for variants to form. What, um, okay. first of all, from a biological perspective, can you explain this process? And mm-hmm. from a societal perspective, what are we supposed to do about that? So let's get the terminology right. So as we talked about earlier, viruses are always mutating. So no vaccine or no drug makes a virus mutate. Right. That's the wrong perspective in which you look at right. it. Got it. The, what the what the immune response is is putting pressure, selection pressure on the virus. And if there's a one particle with the right mutation that can escape the antibody, that will emerge. Right. Mm-hmm. So that's what happens with influenza virus. Right. We vaccinate every year, and there are not a lot of people that get infected, so they get natural immunity. And then the virus is incredibly varied. It mutates like crazy. And there's in some person somewhere, there's one variant that escapes the antibody, which has been induced either by infection or vaccination. It can be both. Mm -hmm. And that drives the emergence of the new variant. So the next year we need to change the vaccine. So I would say both natural infection and vaccination, sure, select for variants. Absolutely. There's no question because they're inducing immunity. Now, what happened last year was uh, at the beginning of 2020, very few people in the world were immune as the virus first started spreading. But you can see in the sequences of those isolates from the beginning of 2020, you can see all of the changes that are now present in the variants of concern at very, very low frequencies. They were already there, but there was no selection for them to emerge Mm -hmm. until November when we now had many millions of people who had mostly been infected, but also some vaccinated. Then we saw the alpha variant emerge in England, probably because of immune selection. Now the, the virus that had the change that evaded the antibody had an advantage and that virus drove through the population. So, so that's what we're seeing. We're seeing all these variants are simply antigenic selection. So, so the, the variants, the mutations that are at the core of these quote unquote variants, they were always there all along. The vaccine or the infections did not create them. No, the infections don't create them, but it's they're selected. That, it's like the vaccine wipe out a lot of the variants, right? And then um, by being immu- uh, by making your body immune to them, and so but some of them survive. Yeah, and the, and exactly. Then, and and those, then there's another those... tree that's built, and it's unclear what that tree leads to. I mean, it could make things much worse or much better. And we don't we don't know? Well, with flu, we see year after year the virus changes. We change the vaccine. We deal with it. Then we change it again. There's but, an unending. But see, that's series. a very different story. If do you think? Do you think COVID will be um, with some likelihood uh, like the flu, whereas basically variants will never be able to um, uh, eradicate it? It will never eradicate it in any case, ever. (laughs) Well, come up with a vaccine that uh, makes you immune to enough variants to where there's not enough evolutionary like room. Well, if you cut down the number of infections, then you reduce the diversity, sure, Yes. right? The problem is if, let's say you're a cynic and you say, well, vaccination is just selecting for variants, so let's stop it. But then you're going to have infection and that's going to select for variants. Yeah. And there, the more you're more likely to get very sick because we know the vaccines <laughs> are really good at preventing you from dying. So that's why it still makes sense to use vaccines because they prevent you from dying. Yeah. That's the bottom line. But can we ever make a vaccine that deals with all variants? Absolutely. And the reason I say that is because people who get <clears throat> naturally infected with SARS-CoV-2, they develop COVID, they recover. If you, if you give them one vaccine dose, they make an immune response that handles all the variants that are around right now. All of them. 
much better than people who've gotten two doses of vaccine. Mm. For some reason, their immune response has suddenly broadened after the infection vaccination, and they can handle all the variants that we know of so far. So that tells me we can devise a strategy to do the same thing with a vaccine that makes a really broad vaccine that'll handle uh, all the variants. Well, you actually, uh, on the virology blog, I don't know if you're the author of that, but- the, I am, uh, oh, <laughs> I yeah. am, yes. Oh, the, the blog, yes, but uh, there's a particular post that's talking about reporting on a paper, mm -hmm. the, the mix and match strategy. Oh, yes, that's one of my co-writers, uh, Trudy Ray, yeah. Yeah, that's a, uh, it's an interesting idea that there's some uh, or early evidence now that uh, mixing and matching vaccines, mm -hmm. like one shot of Pfizer and one of like Moderna or something, that creates a much better uh, immunity than uh, does two shots of yes. Pfizer. I think that's worth exploring, absolutely. And this is relevant. What we're doing with influenza, you know, instead of having to vaccinate people every year, why can't we devise a vaccine which you'd get once in your lifetime or maybe once every 10 years, okay? Yeah. So the, the spike of influenza, it's a long protein, kind of like the spike of SARS-CoV-2. It's stuck in the virus membrane. And the very tip, that's the part that changes every yeah. year. This is where the antibodies bind. But the stem doesn't change. And if you make antibodies to the stem, they can also prevent infection. It's just mm -hmm. that when people are infected or with the current vaccines, they don't make many antibodies to that stem part, but we're trying to figure out how to make those and we think they would be broadly protective and you'd never be able to, or more rarely be able to have a variant emerge that, that uh, escaped it. And I think we can do the same thing with, with coronavirus too, for sure.